Hello, my name is Ria and I'm one of the dietitians here at West Wing Counseling. Today I'm going to talk a little bit and just touch on kind of the first steps to navigating hunger and fullness in recovery. Um, before I do this, I just want to make a note that if you've experienced an eating disorder, you probably understand how it can impact our hunger and fullness. And I'm not going to get too much into that, but just know that our hunger and fullness absolutely can be impacted um, by the eating disorder and by recovery, depending on where you're at. So if you're in a place of working on eating consistently or increasing intake, actually paying attention um, and trying to navigate hunger and fullness at this time might not be the best thing for you. Um, but again, this is totally individual, so it's up to you and your team to decide that. Sometimes we are actually in the place where we need to push through fullness or um, appetite, etc. If it has been impacted by the eating disorder, um, especially if we're working on getting enough consistently. So again, this might not be the best thing for everybody. But when you are ready to tune into your hunger and fullness, um, I really encourage starting with hunger since fullness sensations tend to be more wrapped up in the eating disorder. But again, this is individual. Um, first, I like to work on just generally neutralizing and normalizing hunger and fullness sensations. Um, and this is done with curiosity versus judgment and recognition that one is not good or bad or better than the other. And it's actually just our body communicating with us. So that's number one. Number two, I like to um, discuss how actually sometimes we need to override our sensations. So an example of this is maybe I'm not hungry for breakfast, let's say, but I know I'm going to work. Um, I might need to override that sensation and say, you know what, I actually still need to eat breakfast at my regular time because I won't have time to eat once I get to work and, and I want to make sure I get breakfast in. So that might be a time I'm overriding or using my, my brain, my knowledge to make sure that I'm getting nourished and fed. Um, thirdly, again, this is all kind of the introduction to our hunger and fullness cues. I like to encourage curiosity and personal insight. So there's no right or wrong way to feel hunger and fullness sensations. Um, personal insight actually may include journaling or um, having a bit of a hunger fullness sensation log, maybe noting what the sensation feels like. Um, maybe how hungry, like I'm very hungry or just a little bit hungry or I think I'm hungry, um, how we know that, what our, what our signs of that are. Is it a stomach feeling? Is it a body feeling? Is it a craving for foods? Is it a, a thought about food? Um, and if there's any emotion or thoughts attached to those sensations that we're experiencing. So again, that is kind of like the start. So we want to normalize, neutralize hunger and fullness sensations. We want to discuss that sometimes we have to we have to override those. It's not just always listening to our hunger and fullness. Um, and thirdly, it's getting to know our personal experience with these sensations. Then we can actually get into the nitty gritty of understanding your personal hunger and fullness and take it from there and learn more. Um, but that's it. Again, that's just the first steps to navigating hunger and fullness in recovery.